This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar covering media management, file sizes, and video formats. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. In this excerpt, I explain why H.264 and HEVC are considered inefficient for video editing. Back in the old days when we shot film, imagine taking a strip of film and holding it up to the light. As you looked at the film, you saw an individual image, every image complete next to its neighbor on that strip of film. It's called the iframe, the image frame, as we illustrate here. When we recorded on magnetic tape all those many years ago, we also recorded complete images for each frame. There is no relationship between the information for image 2 and the information for image 3, even though they're next to each other, whether it's on film or magnetic tape, they are both complete and independent. As we move to digital media, we also move to iframes, except the iframes were so big that early storage devices couldn't begin to deal with data in that quantity that's time sensitive, being able to play 30 frames a second. So instead, we created what's called a GOP, a group of pictures. We took a clump of pictures. In my example, I'm using 12, and they'll range from 7 to 12 to 15, depending upon a variety of technical factors. But for this illustration, we'll work with 12. In a group of pictures, only the first frame is a complete image. The B and the P, which stands for bidirectional and predictive, the B and the P frames simply list the changes that have occurred since that initial image. They're not really images at all. They're more like Word text files. Well, here's an example. Think of the, the GOP, the group of pictures, as a chess match. We all know how a chessboard sets up. It always sets up the same way. The pieces are always on the same square. So the very first image that we take of a chessboard is complete. We see where every piece is. But when we record a chess match and report on it, all we really need to do, because everybody knows the starting position, is I only need to describe the pieces that change position because they only change one piece per move. So what happens is every newspaper report, every book that talks about chess, doesn't have to take a photograph of the chessboard for every move. It just has to describe the piece that moves, which means in order for me to be able to see what the chessboard looks like, I've got to go back to the very beginning, that iframe, and solve or add each of those changes until I get to the frame that I want to look at, indicated by that blue arrow. It's exactly what happens with media. Let's say that I want to add and edit three clips that are all GOP based. Well, first, if I want to edit the iframe clip, I simply display the image that's right at that blue line. It's parked on a frame boundary. The image is complete. The display is instantaneous. But for me to display a GOP based clip, look at the bottom layer. I go back to the first eye. I then dial in all the changes until I get to the blue line because I have to solve how each frame is changed from the frame before it to be able to display that predictive frame. Then I go up to the next track and go to the iframe and solve the six images that are there before I can display that P frame. Then I go up to the third track. Well, you see the problem. The iframe is very efficient. I can display that picture instantly. The GOP, I've got to go back, find the iframe, dial in all the changes to get to the frame that I want, do that for the next layer, do that for the next layer, do that for the next layer. And the CPU was working really, really, really hard to be able to display that. Well, CPUs are really fast, as you can see, because we can, in fact, edit H.264 or HEVC material. But this is what I mean when I say that the codec is efficient. I can display the frame instantly or inefficient, I've got to go back and calculate all the changed frames in order to be able to display the frame that the playhead is parked on. There are other differences between codecs. For instance, AVC HD is a GOP format. It's only 8-bit, which creates smaller files, but it's less efficient to edit, as we've seen. ProRes 422 is iframe based. It's 10-bit, which gives us smoother playback because of the iframe. Faster rendered and export, also because of the iframe. More accurate color and smoother gradients because of the 10-bit, but it creates files which are three to six times bigger than H.264. 
Then we've got RAW and LOG files, also iframe based, up to 14 bit depth, which gives us the greatest range of color and grayscale, which allows us to adjust colors and grayscale later in post, but those files are two to four times bigger than ProRes. So the more accurate color that we want, the faster response that we want, the bigger the files have to become. And that's the trade-off that we're wrestling with. It's not that H.264 is bad, but it is inefficient and it is limited. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at LarryJordan.com slash store and look for Webinar 291. By the way, when you need to stretch your training dollars, membership in our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 1,900 movies on a wide variety of subjects. Plus, premium members can download practice media and projects. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it multiple times each month. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. And thanks.